Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. I am not a postage expert by any means at all. I don't want you to think I am. This is just one of those things that I've learned and so I'm sharing with you. This time of year, especially, I think it's important to think about your postage costs because you're shipping to your family. You might want to thank some of your YouTube subscribers. You might just want to thank some of your crafty friends and send them something. There are a couple of different strategies. Gretchen from Cat and Paws has done a test where she has a little gift in here. I'm not going to open it and show it to you, but she showed it on her channel where she took something like this and put it together and put it in here. And I think she, you know, tested it and had it weighed and everything. So she could use one stamp. So she got to thank all of her contributors to a challenge with just a regular stamp. And I love this idea because I like to put something fun in a card. When I send a card, I like to at least put a few die cuts that I think the person might like. So that's a really neat way to bump your holiday cards up a little or to thank people because postage costs can add up pretty quick, right? If you're sending something to 20 people or even five if it's big. Gracie Beach Bum, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get it wrong. Uh, Gracie Beach Bum 13, you guys know who I'm talking about. She does what she calls sunshine mail. So she keeps it very, very inexpensive. She uses smaller envelopes. I think I have her fun Halloween envelope up here like this, she she makes small th things and sends them out so she can reach a lot of people. And I think that's a really fun way, sunshine mail. I've been doing a lot of pocket letters. And if any of you are watching this video and you're going, no, you're still doing it wrong, then be sure and tell me. What I've been using, and I've experimented a little, is the six by nine clasp envelopes. But I will tell you, you can't go crazy decorating this edge and putting a lot of stuff in because the length just gets too long and it's very tricky with just a little bit of ribbon and some washi tape right here to wrap that along on several of them the clasp didn't actually close i just taped it all the way but i sent quite a few pocket letters and it was four dollars a piece then crystal from cruising with crystal sent me wonderful happy mail and she made her envelope and look at how much it was it was four dollars because she's still coming in at first class not using priority if you can send it first class you'll be pretty close on priority so if you're sending happy mail to somebody who doesn't even know it's coming you don't need to spend extra to get it there faster. Makes sense? And this is a really nice thick cardstock that she used. She used one of those 12 by 12 sheets that has a giant picture that nobody really knows what to do with if they make cards and that kind of thing. But it's a gorgeous envelope, right? So what I was thinking was, this is longer. This resolves that trying to fit it into the thing. It's nearly the same width and width isn't a problem for a pocket letter, but it's longer. So I could go back and watch the tutorial that she told me she got this from and make one, or I could kind of just look at the envelope and figure it out. But making your envelopes, you could send a whole bunch of joy to people for $4 a piece. The reason I started using these, honestly, was just because a pocket letter doesn't fit in here well. See, it's too long to fit in a small priority box. So I started looking around. But a small priority box is seven something to send this box. I'm gonna fold it up so if you're not familiar with these, you can see. And the six by six pads don't fit in these boxes. They're, they're, not, they're just not a great shape for a paper crafter like me. So it goes like this, right? It's a darling little box, but it's not very big. Um, this works if you're going to do like some loose embellishments or some fun little stuff, but for seven, I think it might even be $7.95, you need to fill this box full to get your money's worth in weight, right? Because you can take your fancy envelope just like this and you could mail this priority and if it's lighter, it's not going to cost you $7.95. The other thing you can do if you wanted if you didn't want to make envelopes and maybe you were in a, a challenge or you had a date and you were running late, this same envelope right here, this flat rate envelope, I think is seven something. It's the same price as the small box. 
and actually a lot of our stuff fits in it better right a pocket letter is gonna fit in it great one thing that's kind of a bummer to me is when I put my pocket letters in these envelopes and I got these from Dollar Tree you can get yours anywhere eight in a package for one dollar they have some self adhesive ones that are six in a package for a dollar but since my adhesive doesn't always work and I have to use tape because of the length anyway I wasn't worried about it these the when I use this and I put a pocket letter in it it's kind of poofy so I don't feel like I can put like an A2 card or a bunch of stuff for somebody to color other stuff in there because I think it's going to get bent up and if I use this if I put a pocket letter I could spend a couple more dollars and do it this way but if I'm sending a bunch of them, I might want to keep it less expensive. So it just depends on what you want to put in with your pocket letter or cards or that sort of thing. I haven't typically used these big envelopes because when I was mailing a lot of A2 cards and embellishments, and I just didn't think this was a good system. But with a pocket letter, it gives it some stability and then you could probably put stuff in there and it would work. These boxes, this is the medium flat rate box, and there are, I think, a couple different shapes. This one, I don't think, yeah, this one 12 by 12 doesn't fit in, but there are ones that 12 by 12 fits in, I think, because you guys talk about it. When it isn't holiday time and the lines aren't so long, if you're at a post office that you go to quite a bit, uh, there's there are a couple people at my post office that are super sweet to me and they will say if I take something in like in the beginning I took in different size boxes so I would take in a box like this and I would have it all wrapped up and I would say I'd like to send this priority and then they would say okay next time you might want to think about using a priority box the other thing I do is I ask at my post office. I'll go in and say, what's the cheapest way to do X or Y? This really isn't the time of year to make friends asking a lot of questions, right? Because the lines are long and people are crabby. And if you had to go around again, it would be a big mess. But just think about it. If you're going to send a bunch of things, ask a few questions. You can save a lot of money. The other thing that happens to me sometimes is I go in to send something priority and they'll tell me well it's Friday it'll get there at about the same time if you do it first class so just ask questions and don't assume that the way you've always done it is the cheapest way because things change the other thing I noticed is the boxes have changed over time because I had some small and mediums that were from my mom that had been sitting around for a while and it like caused chaos when I took them to the post office. They didn't know what to do with them. Thanks so much for watching and I hope that your post postage costs are not over the top this holiday season and that you're taking it easy and giving yourself some breaks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.